Hello everybody and welcome to our first webinar in the series of four that we're running based on the software SIFT and how we can integrate it with QuickBooks to get the most out of your accounting details. So just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Tom. I'm a cloud accounting specialist at PJCO. So my focus is on the integration of apps in the accounting ecosystem to try and get the most out of them and therefore get the most out of your data. So today I'll be talking about SIFT how to get it connected and some basic navigation before handing over to my colleagues who will talk through SIFT and how it will help you visualize your data and what that actually means to you. So just moving on and introducing Abby, who will talk to you briefly about cash flow. Hello everyone, my name's Abby and I'm a client portfolio manager here at PJCO. Joining us on the webinar today are my colleagues Jake and Amy, who are also part of our accounts and tax team. So the aim of these webinars is to help you keep track of your business's cash flow by implementing SIFT as part of your process. More so now than ever, cash is extremely important to the success of your business. As we slowly move out of COVID-19, it will be vital to make sure you're making the most of your cash reserves and support loans to ensure that the business continues to survive the coming weeks and months. One of the ways to improve your cash flow is to keep an eye on it frequently. So Tom is going to start by giving us a rundown on how SIFT can help us do this. Okay, so moving on to what is SIFT. SIFT is a third party app that links with your QuickBooks package and pulls in all of the data from the past two years and uses this data to produce useful insights from very little input from yourself. So once connected, the data that is pulled in will allow you to visualize what it actually means for your business as its user-friendly approach will make data that's normally bland and confusing much more interesting and useful for aspects such as monitoring your cash flow, which is vitally important, especially at this current time. So the insights that are provided by SIFT are a huge advantage to using it alongside QuickBooks as the cash flow forecasting aspect is something that's not really available within QuickBooks. Our webinar series will be four webinars covering each of the available topics within SIFT. So webinar two will cover in detail the visualize and ratio sections, Webinar three will cover benchmarking, tax and valuation, followed by the final webinar, which will be forecasting and budgeting. So now moving on to connecting SIFT. So the first step to get connected will actually just be to ask us to invite you. So once we've added you as a user, you'll receive the email that's currently on screen. You can follow the link to set up your profile and create your password, and you will then have access to SIFT. So whilst you're setting it up, you will have an option to select your industry. This will be particularly useful for certain aspects of SIFT, such as benchmarking. This will be where you can compare your business to the industry average across your industry. And it, it kind of explains to you what that also means for you. So some basic navigation from SIFT. On the left hand side, you'll see the main categories. And once you click into these, you'll see the subcategories appear along the top. The drop down arrow next to visualize gives you lots more options of ways to break down and visualize your data. And I'll hand over to Abby, who's going to talk you through some of the ways that you can do this. Thanks, Tom. From the visualize section in SIFT, you will be able to look at a 12 month overview of your business that will look like this. The aim of the visualize section is to make the numbers work for business owners that want to see their figures represented visually rather than numerically. This overview is really simple to navigate. At the click of a button, you'll be able to generate a graph that shows you the income you've invoiced for and the expenses you've incurred, broken down month by month. This example looks at incoming and expenses together, but if you want to, you can also choose to run a separate income or expenses reports. Whichever way you choose, the color-coded graph format should make it really easy to understand and make it clear for you to be able to analyze your business performance. For example, you might be interested in at looking at which months your expenditure was particularly high to address why that was, or want to know which months you generated the highest turnover. If we look at the next slide, you can also run a similar report that to look at your profit and loss and compare this by month by month. If you're a visual person and want to be able to see your business in this type of format, then this software could really work for you. The next se section within SIFT 
is the customer function and Amy will talk you through this now. So first thing, I'm going to talk about why we should monitor sales. So obviously you want to know how much money is coming in. And um, once you know this, you'll then be able to manage your spending to ensure that you make a profit. Um, it enables you to make judgments on your marketing strategies. It can also highlight what service or product is preferred, giving you an insight to your client's preference. Um, overall, this will improve your performance and can open up opportunities. So the customer features, the tab along the top shows sales, accounts receivables, debtors, days outstanding, new customers, active customers and retention. The advantage to this is the visual representation. There's multiple graph types and colour coding and there's comparisons with previous years so it's easier to spot trends and anomalies. It's easy to understand because there's summaries provided so if you're not an accountant it quite clearly says it underneath. Um, value amounts and percentages are also provided. The sales tab, if you see in the top left hand corner, there's a little function that allows you to adjust the period of the graph. You can choose to view this monthly, quarterly, annually or a custom range. On the other side you can see that there's an actual versus prior, so if you decide you can compare monthly. And along the side you can see that there's two different colours, so it colour codes which period. Um, also at the bottom you can see a summary, and this summary highlights the top customers and their percentage of your sales compared to the prior period. I'm now going to move on to the Accounts Receivables tab. So Accounts Receivable is the money that's owed to your business, and this is vital for cash flow purposes. By monitoring this you may be able to see some inefficiencies within your current process. This may also allow you to negotiate shorter payment terms with your client. Along the top you can see that there is a breakdown in days um, and on the bottom there's a percentage of clients overdue so you can see that the majority are 120 days overdue. Um, along the right hand side you can also see a percentage per client so Analog Limited would need more time chasing than Jack Van Tromp. If all of that was a little bit busy for you, they also do further breakdowns. So the debtor graph shows each customer and how much they owe quite clearly. The days outstanding clearly establish periods of overdue invoices. So as you can see that the majority of the invoices are 120 days overdue. So this would suggest a lack in credit control process. I can't show you on here, but on the actual app, if you hover over it, it gives you the monetary amounts as well. Um, new customers, if you want to track how many new customers you're getting you can see it here where it's additional per month or you can see at the bottom the total amount of customers. Active customers, this shows the amount invoiced per month compared to the prior period. As you can see July and September have particularly high invoices. If your work is seasonal it might explain this, however if it's not you then might want to go back and check what you did in the months and see if you can implement it throughout the year. Retention. This is the last tab. So retention refers to the ability of a company to retain its customers over a specified period. Ideally, for cash flow purposes, you'd want to aim for as high as possible. And for some of these lower periods, you might consider whether there's any clients in there that you could invoice monthly rather than quarterly. Um, I'm now going to pass you on to Jake who will talk about the cash flow. Another heading that we have under Visualize is the cash tab. This is split into four tabs. The first tab shows a simple bar chart of cash in and out, which is often more useful than profit and loss when funds are tight, as you can better review what surplus funds you have made each month. If we look at the second tab, we can see what funds you have had available each month over the past year as both a summary graph or as you see here a comparative graph showing all of the bank balances in one place. This can be particularly useful for companies that have seasonal trends. And finally for those of you that prefer to dig into the figures the last two tabs give you a detailed cash flow from either direct or indirect method. The direct method as shown captures cash directly transferred, whereas the indirect method works backwards from the net profit figure, removing non-cash items such as depreciation, debtors and creditors. 
And the important line to look at here is the free cash flow line, as this is the amount of surplus cash that you have made. Now I'm going to pass you back to Tom for any questions. Thank you, Jake, and thank you for attending everybody. So I imagine the main question here is probably going to be how much is this going to cost? So in terms of getting connected and the subscription fee, there isn't one, so we will be giving that out for free. If you require any further assistance, then please get in contact with us and we can arrange for that to happen. But in the meantime, please feel free to ask any questions and we'll see how we can help you. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, leave a comment down below. You can also find us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and quite recently, TikTok. And we'll see you next time. Stay safe.